This conference will now be recorded. So, thanks, Chris. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll just uh, go back to the first slide really quick. Um, this is our October meeting. This is the first time I think we've had an October meeting. So um, we wanted to just get a head start and we wanted to use this as a platform to first and foremost, um, break in any new club leadership. Everyone's welcome, of course, but we, we wanted to kind of um, break the ice with an early meeting, have it short and um, less topics and lots more time for questions and answers. Um, Chris just introduced himself. Thank you, Chris. And um, my name is Aaron Kramer. This is my third official season as girls director for the NCJLA. Last season was cut short, but I still was pretty busy regardless of the all of the games being canceled. So that was very disappointing for us too, but we still kept busy um, trying to keep in touch and mitigate um, COVID-19 and start planning for the 2021 season. Um, I came from Walnut Creek Warrior Lacrosse Club. I was girls director for them for about four or five seasons. And including my first season with the NCGLA, I was also their director. Um, I've had a wonderful time as girls director and I look forward to many more years as girls director. And I look forward to meeting some of you in this season and also working with you over email, phone, whatever you need. Um, Chris and I are here for you. So let's get started. Okay, so our agenda for today, you know, as Aaron said, uh, this is actually, I believe, the first October one we've had, at least the ones that we've held. Um, so we're trying to get a jump on things early, just to kind of set the stage that, you know, these meetings are to cover the important things that happen during these periods throughout the season, during these times of the month throughout the season. So, um, you know, one thing we're going to cover the the things that are the most timely at these meetings. Um, anything that it's a current event, uh, due dates. We're going to follow up a lot on the action item emails that you receive or that your your club administrators receive. So um, it's important to kind of understand the purpose of these webinar meetings. Um, we also have, you know. We try and bring the most up-to-date, relevant information to you. So it's a good thing if you can't attend these meetings to try and include somebody uh, on your program to uh, to sit in on them. Um, but we also understand that you know sometimes scheduling just doesn't work out. So we do post these um, these webinars on our NCJLA YouTube channel and put links uh, on the website um, as well. So you'll be able to to go back and review the. Um, the calls even if you can't make the original call. So the things that we're going to talk about tonight, we're going to talk about, um, you know, especially in these tough times, how to recruit players, maybe some ideas in terms of how to get more interest for clubs um, to, to, to bring players into your programs. Um, then we're going to go through, you know, volunteer recruiting. Um, we have a plethora of documentation, of flyers, things that you can use uh, that are on the NCGLA website. There are tools that you can use to kind of break down the, the position descriptions and things like that to help you facilitate uh, getting volunteers for your programs. Um, you know, I don't think we'd have a webinar meeting without talking about recruiting officials. Um, some of the, again, some tools to be able to do that, the importance of recruiting officials. And then we're going to go through and touch on some coaches training aspects. Um, keep in mind that the uh, the next webinar in November, we're also we're going to touch on coaches training, but we're going to go into that um, in a little bit further detail at that time. And then at the end of it, we're going to open it up to question and answer period. So uh, we want to make sure that you're getting the questions that you have answered and we've we've allocated time to do that at the end. Cool. Um, I'd also like to let you know that you can use the chat function if there is something that you want to ask um, and if you want to interrupt, you, you may at any time. So um, please use that function or just take yourself off of mute and ask the question. So for recruiting players, we just made this slide to bullet point a few of our best practices and our favorite ways to find players. So what's really great is US Lacrosse has a new program called Trilax, or you could make your own program, learn to play 
learn to play lacrosse session to host new players in your community um, to to inspire new players to come out and it, it usually is a one day event or you could do multiple events but the tri lax is a an official u.s lacrosse program that you can arrange directly with u.s lacrosse so we highly recommend that and we know lots of clubs have been very successful with that program we also really encourage you to reach out to your local schools so call the principals and try to get in touch with the PE teachers. Um, you can even offer virtual training for the PE teachers. Once COVID is over and we're allowed to get back into the schools, a lot of principals and PE teachers will actually let you come on campus during the day and teach a PE class. Um, if, you're, if you are a background checked volunteer or you, if you can get that through your district, I think that would be the, the only credential that you would need. Um, and I know if you have a parent coach or you have parent coaches with your club that are also PTA volunteers or P, you know, school volunteers, then they're already credentialed to be on campus during the day. It works great. And you could, if you have equipment, if you have equipment from your club that you can use, extra sticks, balls, maybe mini goals, anything that you can take and and share with the students. It worked, it's, I've done it myself and it's been very um, successful. Uh, if you don't have extra equipment, you can also request through NorCal chapter of US Lacrosse to borrow sticks and equipment to take in. And you would use, we would recommend using softballs like that um, to introduce lacrosse to the students in your local P, um, PE classes, elementary, middle school, maybe. Uh, but definitely reaching out to those principals to see if they're willing to work with you is, is a great step. Um, also, if you, you could attend local school and community fall festivals by hosting a booth or a table where you can um, have some of your members wear their uniforms, bring their sticks, um, just kind of just show, show yourselves and get out there so people can come over and ask you questions about it. Um, and lastly, that you utilize the local PTA Facebook pages, community social media platforms, next door, ask it or post flyers, or maybe ask if you can post flyers on like mom's groups, just to get the word out there. Highly recommended. Um, Next is um, recruiting volunteers. So we have a new resource um, that's posted on the NCGLA, uh, NCGLA website. It's a document um, that's several pages that includes these highlights and it includes planning, um, program evaluations, um, how to recruit specific volunteers for specific age groups. We have these are really great evaluation tools for um, your coaches to do self-evaluations and also player parent evaluations of coaches for the um, end of the season. It um, really cool advertising checklist to make sure that you hit all those marks that we talked about earlier with player recruitment. The same thing goes for recruiting coaches and volunteers, all the different places you should be looking for them and, and how to advertise for them. This document is in the help and support tab. It's under coaches section number eight. It's pretty easy to find, um, but I highly recommend that you, you search for that on our website and take a look. So Chris, do you wanna take this one? Or you want me to take this? Yeah, I got it. Yeah. Okay. So officials, everybody's favorite topic that we always cover, but essentially, you know, you guys know we couldn't do this without our officials. So uh, every program does have the responsibility to go out and try and bring um, new officials to the table. So, you know, there are different types of officials. You got your adult officials and your junior officials for your programs. Um, you know, different ways that you can get help with that. Um, enlist parents as volunteers to take on this task. You know, obviously, um, when you 
meet with your parents, you're going to go through a list of we need scorekeepers, we need um, add officials to that, and it doesn't it doesn't just have to be um, the adults. You know, you could ask for do you know any kids, any juniors that may be interested in this. Um, those are those are additional options too, and they also it, you're bringing additions to the officials to the table does satisfy a requirement that the AC, that the NCJLA does have for for every club. So again, advertising. Um, you know, it's it's good to to keep in contact with uh, past members of your club. Um, you know, sometimes that you got some some valuable resources out there that you know once the parents may age out. Um, we understand that you know they go and typically watch their uh, son or daughter in high school. Um, but there may be some opportunities to to reach out to those to those parents who were highly involved and and bring them in um, into the volunteer and, and, and officiating as well. Um, local high school and college coaches, if you happen to be fortunate enough to have a, a high school in the area or a, a college in the area that has a lacrosse program, uh, certainly reach out to those organizations to see if um, there might be somebody who would be interested in stepping in and earning a little cash on the side there. Um, adult registrations, you know, adjust, adjust your club's operations and team registrations to include, uh, for 14s must provide one adult per team. That way it's top of mind. You know, people know that there are requirements that um, each club has satisfying the officials uh, requirement. Um, for 12U and 10U, they must provide one junior or adult uh, per team registered. So again, those are just the reminders of the responsibilities for those programs. Um, and then, you know, there are little things that you can do to sweeten the pot. You know, we have offered free uniforms uh, or, or registration for families that have somebody who volunteers uh, to be an official, um, you know, cover any out of pocket cost uh, for the training and certification. Uh, those little things can help tip the balance of somebody who may be, you know, I'm not so sure about it, um, maybe a little lukewarm, but then, you know, when you start adding a little, little, bit, little bit here, a little bit here, that may be just enough uh, to get somebody to take that first step. And often we find that once the person takes the first step and they actually attend a training or attend a meeting, um, they tend to they tend to step forward and, and um, officiate for the organization, so. Okay, could you change slides? Thank you. So uh, to help facilitate communication with uh, those parties, we do have these flyers that you can uh, download and print and hand out or use the digital copy. Uh, if you're gonna email your your um, your families uh, requesting volunteers. Um, and this also, this information helps maybe give them the, the, um, the requirements for what's involved um, what type of uh, reasons, obviously, reasons why they should get involved and how they can support the local communities by becoming an official. So next for coach training and opportunities, and we, and we also have some recommendations. Uh, for the 2021 season, we have reduced the coaching requirements, but we just wanted to say that we still recommends the USL Coach Development Online Courses. This season, they will be having a new webinar or a couple of webinars coming soon for level one and level two. They'll be a little bit more towards coaching theory, um, but I, I have um, been involved in that process of getting ready to, to train um, coaches on these new webinars and uh, they're fantastic. So I I'm gonna, definitely recommend them more once they're launched um, officially. But you can still take the US level one and level two online and the PCA courses also are online. Additionally, I believe we will have USL in-person coaches clinics once the season is a go. And so those dates will be determined based on um, when we find out if we're allowed to have them or not. So we'll let you all know. Um, the other opportunities that we'd like to um, let you know is there's something coming up soon. I think it's like tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow on Thursday. And up to us.org women and girls in sports symposium. So you just need to go to that website and I've also will link it to the girls landing page.
Okay, so um, following up on the monthly action item list that the uh, NCGLA sends out to club administrators, um, we just wanted to tackle some of those items. And first of all, thank you to everybody who's attending number one, uh, the rep call. Um, again, these are really important. We try and um, fit the most amount of information into each um, web webinar and make the most of our time together. So um, we're very mindful of, of people's time commitments and want to keep that to a minimum, but still be able to effectively communicate what's going on. Um, if you haven't yet, open up your uh, 2021 operations guide. Uh, the operations guide is the Bible for uh, all things NCJLA, and it also includes additional items related to the suspension of requirements um, due to this year's COVID situation. Um, uh, one, uh, review the 2021 modified season calendar. That's another important thing to uh, be aware of. This year, because of COVID, a lot of things have had to be adjusted, timelines, things like that. So um, it's important to go back into the calendar and verify the, the dates uh, that things are due or things are coming up. I uh, highly recommend people um, uh, attaching the Google Calendar, the NCJLA Google Calendar to their own calendars if you have the ability to do that. Uh, it's kind of a nice way to get those reminders without having to go in and add them to your own calendar yourself. Um, review your player registration and confirm the, that you have your COVID-19 waivers, um, safe sport and email opt-ins, uh, make sure that those have been uh, addressed as well. Um, the COVID waivers are obviously new this year and important for every program to have access to, and you can customize those for your, your teams. Uh, submit application to your uh, region's commissioner for the 2021 season. So. Um, Submit your application. So what's um, you're about to get an email here in the next 24 hours related to this topic specifically. If you were a part of the delegates meeting, this would come up. Um, but this year, what we're do, looking to do is add additional volunteer positions um, that, for each region. So we're breaking things out. So um, we're looking for volunteers to be commissioners over separate regions. Um, I'm going to send out a, a boys. Um, division email here by tomorrow uh, that one um, we're still looking for two uh, stipend 12u and 10u 8u commissioner positions um, but we're also looking to to create commissioner positions for each different each region to to make sure that we are doing all that we can to stay in touch with what's going on because what's happening in the Sacramento region may be different than what's happening in North Bay. So um, we and we don't want to lose sight of that. We don't want to lose uh, that perspective. So um, there will be a list of things that we, we will ask the volunteer to do. It's not a huge time commitment. Um, knowing the region is probably the most important factor to it. But we really do want to make sure that every region has a voice, everybody's heard, and that, you know, so that we can do the job as best as we can. Um, and let me get through the action items and then we'll take a second to uh, address the questions in the chat. Okay. Um, so plan your, your club applications for scholarships and grants uh, by October 20th. Obviously, there isn't too much time here. Um, I know that the demand for scholarships and grants this year is significant, especially, you know, based on the hardship that people are facing. So we want to make sure that, you know, people are, are mindful of that and they get their um, items submitted. Um, reach out to the local off-season travel team to partner up to make sure that all players have a team. You know, the, the worst thing that we can do is, you know, leave a kid out that wants to play um, because either they didn't know about something or their program was shut down or, you know, that something to that effect. So we want to make sure that we're partnering up with uh, those programs that are in our areas to make sure that, you know, we're, we're getting kids the opportunity to play when they can play. So um, start planning for uniform orders. I know this is one of those things that uh, is tough because at this point with the registration, you know, we don't know how the dominoes are going to fall. Um, conflicting sports, you know, um, seasons, you know, have changed. Um, 
people may decide that they want to take a year off based on you know COVID re reasons. So um, I know there's a lot of things that we just don't know at this point. So the uniform situation is 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 a tough one. Um, if you have the ability to use uni uniforms from the past, that's fantastic. Um, it is something that people should be at least starting the conversation to figure out how they want to handle uniform situations, whether they want to order new ones or whether they want to reuse what they had. Um, I would anticipate that uniform order uh, uniform orders may be also impacted by um, and by COVID as well. So it's one of those things that you should get you should get thinking about it if you haven't already started the process. Um, inform schedulers of training dates. We are working on that now to figure out when we're going to put together training dates. Obviously, there are you know a lot of dominoes to fall between now and then, um, but it is something that we need to at least be mindful of and try and get on the calendar so that you know if we're able to do those things um, here in the near future, we're able to to accommodate those schedules. Um, Request with uh, with an outreach event ongoing. You know that's one of those things we've covered. You know the different ways that you can do that. Um, it is tough, and each region is going to have to figure out what works best for them and their club based on what their uh, local counties are allowing people to do. Um, we are challenged to have to be get creative in some with some things. So um, as much as you can do to try and at least raise awareness prior to. Um, even though we don't have all the answers, what's going to happen with the season, that would be highly encouraged. And then um, your club treasurer. So get your club treasurer set up to do your taxes and file your nonprofit forms. Again, this is one of those steps that hopefully everybody has a somebody who enjoys accounting or an accountant somewhere in their program and um, to get those items prepared now. So that's one of those things you want to start to address if you have not yet. Okay, can we uh, change to the next slide, please? Yeah. So um, this slide is where we went. We, we've gone a little bit more into depth, and I'll cover this pretty quickly about the re regional commissioners. So due to the growth and the impacts of COVID-19, we really want to implement a comprehensive regional leadership structure, and we want to start it right away. So the board is requesting that we get at least two commissioners to represent each of the five regions in the NCGLA. And when we say at least, there can definitely be more than two, but it would be nice to have at least two, and we definitely want to consider the fact that we've got, you know, boys to consider, boys team to consider, girls teams to consider, and then we have a multitude of levels. Some clubs have a lot more older teams that they're concerned with, and some clubs and regions have a lot more younger teams, and they have bigger 8U, 10U programs, and others don't. So their, their needs and their wants are different. So that's why um, at least two, and more the more the merrier. And the basic things that we'd want these commissioners to do would be to help schedule and lead regular discussions. And um, we would definitely be helping um, as, all, as, all, as always, and but we don't have to be included. We don't have to be included in those like regular discussions, but we want, um, we definitely want it to assist. Um, we also would like that person to advise us so directly, the boys and girls directors regarding rules, game protocols, event schedules, anything that pertains to league and your needs and wants for the league. We want you to get the feedback from them and tell us about it so that we can implement it. And it would be specific to your region and it might not be the same as another region um, for those sort of things. Advising the NCGLA board of directors on league policies and association business. So we we want to hear directly your um, issues or what you need, what you need for your region as far as those policies, because it doesn't one one size doesn't fit fit all, as we all know. Um, 
So providing on-site support for the NCGLA events in their region, what we mean for that would be uh, scheduling meetings um, early and also for the, um, in the scheduling meetings for your region to help facilitate that, um, help us facilitate that for you. But also if we have preseason play days in your region and postseason playoffs events, it would help if we had the leadership um, with those events as well. Um, so you would basically be serving as a liaison between the NCGLA member clubs in your region and the NCGLA board of directors and staff. And lastly, we would want you to report your findings and request and your request to the NCGLA board that pertains specifically to your regional needs and, and what you want in order to make lacrosse accessible, affordable, and most importantly, enjoyable for your members. So we have, um, we've sent this out in the, the last list that we just covered with Chris. So if you have interested in individuals, we have a form to fill out and um, that's about it on that. So this slide, getting started and making connections, we have already reached out to all of the club presidents and reps to inquire about 2021 team registration. So your projections um, of what teams you are looking to field or want to field, or if you have concerns about fielding teams or field acquisitions. Um, and we wanna be there to offer assistance in your preseason planning. So we've already sent out the first point of contact. So on top of that, we're looking to get things moving by coordinating virtual re regional meetings. Um, we're look we think between October 26th and November 8th would be good to start brainstorming your specific regional ideas, needs and want, getting those commissioners in place and um, opening up those lines of communication. As we get closer to the season, we want to help also coordinate regional scheduling meetings between January 5th and January 8th. And these meetings can be virtual or in person, depending on what you, you guys want um, to have. So um, that's for that one. So Lynn, from U.S. Lacrosse, she is our, the Northwest Regional Director of U.S. Lacrosse or Regional Representative. She sent this really great one pager to Chris and myself um, called Fundraising Connections. And it has lots of ideas. I know it's hard to see and I can open up um, a full copy um, at the end of the meeting, um, but we're also going to have a link embedded in this document and it'll turn into a PDF version of the slideshow. So you'll you'll be able to connect it through there and we can also email it into the next um, email we send to all club leadership. But it basically has links that will help you find good donations and community grants through stores like Walmart, Sam's, Walgreens, uh, sporting goods stores, as well as a really good one is a it's a league it's called leagueside.com and it helps it gives you all the tools you need to reach out to local businesses to look for direct sponsorship of your teams or of your club so we really want um really like this page it also touches based on some of the topics we we covered at the delegates meeting including the bill belichick foundation grant and that's a big one. So that opens up, I guess, I think it's in January 2021. Um, and next slide. Any questions? So Chris, should we talk about the, the in the chat anything? Did we cover all of the um, chat? Laura's actually answered a, a few of them already, but I do want to um, just kind of go back to Scott's point where um, you had a question about registration. So I, I know for a fact that, you know, as we reach out to clubs throughout um, the NCJLA, you know, they're, all of them are, are handling registration 
differently. Um, albeit some, you know, a, a lot of them are registrations currently open, but they're not collecting any players' fees yet. Um, some haven't opened registration yet at all. Um, I know that board meetings are taking place with clubs um, discussing these things and the current state of, you know, the what's happening in the their counties. So, um, you know, that there are a lot of unknowns that we just, you know, we, we, we just can't foresee how things are going to unfold in the next few months. So, you know, we can only can control what we can control, right? So the planning stages, you know, as we go through these webinars, you know, we we are approaching things with a baseline of what we do in a normal season. However, we are adjusting them as, uh, you know, our, our health restrictions, you know, change or, or, or don't change. So, um, that's kind of the approach that you know the us directors are are having when it comes to the what we are presenting. Um, the action item emails that club administrators receive are specific to one. These are the normal things that take place during this time of the season. B or one and then B two. Um, anything that's new, anything that's been enhanced, or you know, any forms, any processes, anything that's been updated is also included in that. And three, anything that is going to be COVID-related that impacts one and two, right? So um, we, are, we are trying to move forward as though we we're gonna have a season and take the proper steps to assure that when and if we get the green light, that things are ready to go. Yeah. Chris, I, uh, this is Laura. I just want to um, add on that, you, you know, those of you that are on the phone are going to hear this before anybody else in the league, that um, today we signed on behalf of the league with um, the Youth Sports uh, Alliance for California. Um, we became uh, an organization where we're partnering up with NorCal Premier Soccer, um, California Rugby, California Field Hockey, um, the Pop Warner, and uh, Pony um, Little League. So uh, we felt that it was important that we advocate for you guys at the state level. So we have drafted a letter, we've signed on, requesting the governor to give us very clear guidance for youth sports, specifically youth sports that are run by parent volunteers or you know one or two paid staff, and uh, youth sports that are governed by a national uh, body or a state governing body. So because your clubs are part of that, um, we fit with that. Uh, criteria and so we have a couple assemblymen and uh, a lobbyist that are going to help us with getting an audience with the governor to make sure that we get some very clear guidelines for youth sports and some clear metrics on what we can do. So we signed on that today and hopefully um, you know I'll be able to give you guys an update within the next two weeks in the club action item email or uh, a specific email to your, your club leaders. But we're working at the state level to make sure that opening is a lot easier for us. And then I would like to follow up on the question about uniforms that's been uh, brought up in the chat. You know, this is one of those seasons that if if exemptions were gonna happen, this, this makes a pretty good case for it, right? So, you know, I, I think ultimately we wanna get the kids to play. And I know that, you know, from working with uh, the president at NCLRA, he wants to get the kids to play. So with respect to the uniform, you know, restrictions, requirements, things like that, um, uh, we're not going to be bearing down on, you know, on, on the uniform restrictions. Uniforms are there so that we can identify who's on what team and numbers are there to identify what player is associated with that. Jersey and so you know we those are the those those are the bare minimum things we need right obviously we want some uniformity to to our teams and what they look like but um, uniforms is not going to be an obstacle for kids to play we will figure out a way to handle that um, and and we know like I mentioned a little while ago that 
ordering new uniforms this year may be a problem. So, you know, now it's just coming up with, okay, is it a problem? And if so, how do we handle it? Yeah, please, please email that you need a waiver. It's please. <laughs> it's yeah. Even like eight use, put them in a t-shirt of the same color. They'll be fine. 10 use, put them in a t-shirt of the same color. They'll be fine. Um, just let us know what you need. Do we have any other questions? Hey, Chris, this is Dominic with Folsom. Just, um, well, maybe this was covered because I just hopped on the call like about 10 minutes ago. On the safety manager, is that in U.S. lacrosse requirement, NCJLA requirement, state requirement? Because in our area, you know, certain counties in Sacramento, that's not something I'm seeing that's a requirement in certain counties. So I'm just wondering where that requirement to have a safety manager is coming from at this point. Yeah, Laura, do you want to yeah, address this one? Yes, yeah, please. so um, when a, we, or an I, U.S. Across held that COVID return to play cohort thing and our league was invited to participate in that. And during those discussions, uh, U.S. Across said it would be a hygiene manager. And that just sounded really, odd to some of the leagues. So U.S. Across gave us the freedom to name it whatever we wanted. Um, and even your individual club, if you want that person to have a different name, that's fine. That's just what we called the person that was keeping track of who was attending what. Um, I know that some states, or not some states, some counties are requiring a point person for the organization. Uh, and we wanted to give clubs the freedom to say, well, it's either going to be the club president or it's going to be our safety manager or our club admin. You know, just let us know who we need to talk to if there's a potential exposure is really what the safety manager is supposed to be. Um, I know some of the bigger clubs in the East Bay, they have a risk assessment um, director on their board. Um, I think the most recent one that I saw advertised that was the Scorpions. Um, so it it's a pretty simple job. Take attendance, keep the records, be able to say who was where and when. Right, but if are we talking about this person's for practices and games? And for the for the NCJLA, we would like to have someone just for games. Now, with your own individual club, that's that's up to your club what you would like to do. Okay. So, on that document that you sent out that outlines some of those things, if you have a field that doesn't have two access points, what do you do at that point? Because I can think well, of fields that don't have two access points, an entrance and exit. They both just have one. Um, you know, there's yeah, stuff in so, there about the there's stuff in there about you know you have to if you don't have a volunteer for something you know you have to forfeit games so I just want to make sure I'm clear on what I'm looking at on that document that's necessary if my county says they don't we don't need something like that do we have to still have something like that I guess I'm my glad question. you brought that up yeah I'm glad I'm glad you brought that up so. One of the things that we know from the Department of Public Health for California is that each county is different. We, the NCJLA wants you to follow the level of restriction for your county. Um, I am not anticipating that our counties will let us have games if we have to have safety managers at, you know, check-in to screen everybody. Um, the feedback I'm getting from the governor's office and task force is that, um, you know, they're not going to have competition until it's safe to just play whenever, wherever. Uh, we're pushing back on that. So I would say look at the phases that's at the beginning of the document, and we're going to be operating at the least restrictive. And um, I think it's a great question that you brought up about the exit points. And obviously, if that field only has one, you're only going to have one if you put an entryway there. So, um, but I'm happy to send out some additional guidance if the clubs think 
that they want that result rather than closer to the Thank you. So just to be clear, additional guidance now or additional guidance closer to January? I would think now is good. Okay, cool. Any other questions for tonight? No. Okay, Aaron or Laura, is there anything that you want to um, address or, or bring up before we end tonight's webinar? Uh, just that US Across is not anticipating putting out any more guidance on return to play. So. We're going to be looking at the state of California to give us that green light and that guidance. Okay. I just want to say that um, if anyone has any specific questions after the meeting pertaining to any of the action items that you reach out to Chris or myself, and we're happy to help you walk through any of those things. Great. Yeah. Well, with that, um, I would like to thank everybody for joining us this evening. Um, we will get information out uh, for the November meeting once we get our ducks in a row. Um, again, you'll be able to access the calendar dates on the, in our Google Calendar, which is linked on the website. And um, with that, I will say good night and thank you, everybody. Have a good night.